Hey everybody, this time I want to talk fuzz. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, I just want to remind you to subscribe down below and also sign up for notifications. Let's get to today's topic. So first off, I've got to put a disclaimer out there. Of course, I know all fuzz pedals aren't the same. And if you actually look at my thumbnail, it does say almost in there. So for all you guitar pedal enthusiasts, for your engineers, and for your just straight up nerds, I would say bear with me and let me get out what I want to say. Let's get some easy ones out of the way first. Here I have a Tycho Bray Octavia fuzz. This isn't going to be like your generic fuzz pedal. It's an octave fuzz, so this along with your sub-octave fuzzes like your MXR Blue Boxes, they're not your generic fuzz pedal. I'm not talking about those. Additionally, something like this guy here, which is the Muff Opportunity by RuliWow, this is a op-amp fuzz. I'm not talking about that one either. Op-amp fuzzes, sub-octaves, octave fuzzes, just throw those out of the conversation. Today I'm looking at basically your transistor based fuzzes. So right here I've got two fuzzes. I've got, you know, it's just a, an old muff fuzz that I built. This is just a one knob with a volume. Here is the a Nano Big Muff by EHX. These are transistor based fuzzes and what you're going to see today is essentially how I see these as the same, why I think some of the mods are just that and, you know, maybe learn a little bit about the circuitry inside these pedals. The reason I wanted to do this video actually arose from just doing a simple Google search. I think a month or two ago, I was looking for some information on a negative feedback amplifier, uh, stuff I probably should have known off the top of my head, but I just wanted to double check it on a wiki page. So I went to Google, I typed in negative feedback amplifier, got to the wiki page, scrolled down, and what did I see to the right? But the most common fuzz circuit anybody's ever seen. It's a simple shunt series negative feedback amplifier. The picture's right there on the wiki page and I thought, geez, you know, this is so common. I can probably grab an electronics book, find it. It's used everywhere and it's in pretty much all of your fuzz pedals, at least transistor-based fuzz pedals, in some way, shape, or form. So I guess the first thing we got to do is understand how this circuit works. So for that, I'm going to just quickly skip to my computer here show you the schematic, show you what stuff's doing in the circuit. Um, I know there's lots of videos out here that show it to you, but I think it really will lend to the conversation as we move along here. So here we have that shunt series negative feedback amplifier. This is the schematic that I said basically makes me think all fuzz pedals are the same, relatively speaking. Obviously there's changes in mods and we'll get into those, but many of the manufacturers out there at least have one effects pedal, fuzz effects pedal, that will mimic this circuit here. So what is it? Well, it's essentially two common emitter amplifiers cascading. So what I mean by common emitter amplifiers is you have the input on the base, so if you look at Q1 here, and the output on the collector. Input on the base for Q2, output on the collector. And then the third uh, output here is for the emitter, or the third uh, part of your transistor is the emitter input on base, output on collector, it's common emitter. So looking at the schematic a little bit closer, talking about components, the easiest thing to start with are C1 and C2. These are coupling capacitors, essentially making sure none of the DC bias voltage runs in or out of the circuit. So that's just there, so it makes these effects pedals easily to chain together, you know, plugging one into the next. You're not gonna get effects from one fuzz pedal into the next. The next thing to look at would be R1, R2, and R3. I like to think of these as the biasing resistors. R4 and R5 obviously have to do with the biasing as well, but you know it is a little bit of a balancing act, but most of it really comes from R1, R2, and R3. So when I say bias, what does that mean? Well, essentially Q1 and Q2 as transistors, they need a specific DC voltage at their collector to turn on. So what these resistors R1, R2, and R3 are doing is essentially setting that voltage at the collectors of Q1 and Q2 to make these transistors work as they would as described in the forward active mode in their data sheet. Now before I talk about R4 and R5, it's probably worth noting that common emitter amplifiers have very, very high gain, which is what you would expect from a fuzz pedal. You want 
high gain so you can get everything distorted, get those square waves, etc. So that's what you're doing by cascading a common emitter into a common emitter amplifier. The problem there is when you do that without putting this R5 in here, is it just becomes very unstable. By adding R5 here, you essentially linearize your gain and you stabilize it as well. R4 and R6 in this case are essentially just potentiometers, so variable resistors. As you change the value of R4, you're going to get more or less gain, so it's going to you know, basically determine how much of the negative feedback is sent back to the input or how much of it is going to be sent to ground. Similar with the volume potentiometer R6, as you increase that, you're going to get more output level. As you decrease it, you're going to send it to ground and essentially zero sound. So now that we know how this schematic works or how this effects works, let's take a look at some of the mods that manufacturers will put in place. So the first mod is pretty simple. You're going to change the uh, transistors. So here I've actually got the transistors changed from NPNs to PNPs. You could also just change the type of NPNs or PNPs. Common ones could be something like BC108s, BC183s, um, you know, Analog Man uses NKTs. So there's all kinds of different transistors that you can put in here. Essentially what they're gonna do is just slightly affect how that gain sounds. Uh, you can go germanium transistors or silicon transistors. Uh, one thing to note here is if you change the transistors, obviously you're going to have to change the biasing resistors as well because you might not get that same bias level that's needed for those transistors to turn on with the ones from another schematic. Here's another common mod. This one would be a biasing mod. So you can see here I've added R7, which is an additional uh, potentiometer here to play around with the biasing on the collector of Q1. So as you change that, you can put the biasing maybe a little bit lower, a little bit higher. And then what R1 is doing in this case is essentially making sure that you uh, don't set it too low or too high. Similar to doing that on the collector of Q1, you could also see some people do this on the collector of Q2 or both per se. So you can play around with the biasing in two places. This is probably not something I would suggest. I like biasing it as per the data sheet and having it operate there. That's usually the optimal place to put it. Um, I think what these originally started was, you know, in, in back in times when, you know, you had a lot of uh, through hole components that were a little bit more variable, you know, they were trim pots that uh, a manufacturer could just have one of their uh, engineers tweak it and make sure everything was set. You know, people played around with it and got some different sounds and that's why these things show up now. Um, I think the most common one that I know of is Analog Man does their sun face and that has the sundial, which is essentially a biasing dial. Here's another mod. It's not maybe that common, but I've seen it a few times. Um, I think it's called the Miller Capacitance mod. I'd have to look it up. I probably should have before I did the video. But essentially what it is, is adding a capacitor between the base and collector of Q1 and Q2 or just one or the other. And essentially what that allows you to do is play around with the higher frequencies. So how much you're cutting off, etc. So just a couple more mods here that I've seen before. Uh, this one here is just adding the clipping diodes at the output. So this is hard clipping to ground. It's gonna give you a little bit more uh, distortion, even though you've got a ton of it with the gain anyway. I don't know why this is done. I've seen it many times. I feel like if you're kind of getting to the square wave gains, you probably don't need clipping diodes, but I've seen it before, so we'll, we'll group it in with the, with the rest. And then the last one here is just a simple input level mod. I've seen this a few times called attack. Essentially all you're doing is just adjusting how much of your uh, signal is actually put into the circuit. So it's almost the same as just rolling off your volume on your guitar, uh, but you can do it on the pedal instead. So uh, it's just basically smaller input level is going to uh, maybe give you a little bit less of a, uh, a gain sense. Um, if you increase that, then Basically everything's gonna blow up and you're gonna get that huge fuzz as well. So now that we've gone through that, I've got some manufactured pedal schematics that I pulled from the web. I want you guys to take a look at that and maybe I'll bring you over to the dark side to say, okay, maybe all fuzz pedals are very, very similar or the same. So first up, this is a fuzz face. I grabbed this from electrosmash.com. Great place if you wanna see a breakdown of how that circuit works, they can probably, uh, explain it much better in text than I did on this video, so I definitely recommend checking it out. 
but this is just a simple EHX fuzz face, or sorry, a Dunlop fuzz face. And we see that same uh, shunt series circuit here. And the difference here is they're using PNP transistors. In this case, they're AC128s. But for the most part, this is almost identical to what I showed you uh, in the very first schematic uh, that I pulled from Wiki, or at least the very first one that I showed you before the mods. The next one here is the Analog Man Sunface. So uh, you can see here, again, we have PNP transistors. There's our feedback resistor. There's our fuzz circuit. Uh, and obviously some of these are going to be looking a little bit different, but as I explained before, here's the sundial, which is just affecting the biasing on Q2. So nothing crazy here, pretty similar to the, uh, the fuzz face. So next one is the satisfaction fuzz by uh, EHX. Again, you see that two transistor setup. A um, little bit different in that, let me see here. Uh, we have the attack mod that I talked about in the beginning where you're just essentially adjusting how much of your input signal is gonna get into the circuit. A little bit different you don't have the fuzz output here so it looks like the fuzz is really being controlled by the attack knob but they do have those clipping diodes on the end here so uh, this one's probably the most different that I've seen but it's uh, it's still pretty close with the two transistor setup now again you can use uh, NPNs PNPs you can mix them you can also use silicons or silicons and germaniums or just germaniums there's lots of different ways you can do it. This one's probably the most unique that I've shown you so far. This one is the Tone Bender. So one of the first fuzz pedals that you've probably seen or heard of. Uh, these are PNPs, pretty similar. I really can't say too much about it. They do have the two Miller capacitant mods in here, but for the most part, this is just a PNP version of that original fuzz face circuit. Uh, They've got it labeled as attack here, where on mine it was fuzz, and then volume they have labeled as level. And then the last one I have here is the EHX muff fuzz transistor version. Here, NPNs, we have the clipping diodes mod at the output, and again, it just looks very similar to, uh, to what we've seen with all these circuits. Um, one thing here is this 2.7K ohm here is a set gain value. So we're not really gonna to get uh, too much of a difference here. This would be similar to kind of what I have on this pedal with just one knob being your output. So set gain and all you have is uh, volume control. So I hope you guys like that. I'm, I'm probably giving you guys information that, you know, has been out there for a while. Maybe everybody knows, but you know, maybe, maybe this does hit some people and, and they kind of understand that a lot of this fuzz pedal stuff is just marketing. Uh, you know, a lot of terms have been invented or maybe um, exaggerated, you know, whether it's the type of transistor being used or, you know, I've got new old stock transistors or this has got a special biasing knob. It's, it's all marketing, really, when it comes down to it. You're not going to know what fuzz pedal is for you until you plug it into your equipment and give it a shot. Um, maybe this also kind of explains a little bit about, you know, should you be going out and spending... $200 on a fuzz pedal because it has some specific transistor in it or can you buy the $50, $60 one um, that basically has the same circuit. All things to think about when you're going out and looking for a fuzz pedal. So I guess I'll leave you with this. Every time I go in and look at a fuzz pedal and decide whether I want to buy it or whether I want to build one myself, I always look at the schematic and see if it's worth it. See if it's just the same effect schematic that it's been in countless effects pedals over the years. And if it has, I only have really one thought on those. Well, basically, I just copied the plant we have now. Hmm. Then I added some fins to lower wind resistance. And this racing stripe here, I feel, is pretty sharp. Agreed. First prize. It's just racing stripes and wings. <laughs>